Welcome back, everyone, to our classroom that we call the College of Glycation. Once again, I am Paul Reynolds. I'm a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. And today we're tackling a topic that is both sneaky, but also very significant. The topic is glycation and immune dysfunction. If you've been with us before, you know that we've covered the basics of glycation in earlier episodes. But today we're going to take it much deeper and particularly explore how this sneaky chemical process messes with your immune system, the body's personal defense force. We'll talk about why this matters, how it ties to aging, insulin resistance, and even what you can do to fight back. Plus, we'll trace the history and the trends of this science, backed by solid, peer-reviewed studies. All right, let's set the stage with a quick recap on glycation, because if you're new here, this is the foundation for today's episode. Glycation is what happens when sugar molecules, like glucose, stick to lots of different types of macromolecules, like proteins, fats, and even your DNA. And these sugars attach to the molecules without an enzyme's permission. So you will gunk up your body's machinery when you add these sugars onto proteins, therefore compromising their normal function. These sticky sugar-protein combinations form what we will call, going forward, ages. Those are advanced glycation end products, which are just about as unfriendly as they sound. Ages are troublemakers. We've talked about in the past how they stiffen tissues in the process of compromising proteins. They trigger inflammation by way of cell signaling, and they again wreak havoc on everything from your blood vessels to, of course, today's topic, your immune cells. So glycation happens naturally to some extent, especially as we age, because, well, sugar is everywhere in our bloodstream. But when blood sugar levels are chronically high, imagine those of us that use a Western-type diet and therefore poorly control our diabetes or are insulin-resistant, glycation goes into overdrive. Much more glycation happens in those cases than the normal low levels of baseline glycation. And that's where things get dicey, especially for your immune system. So let's talk about the immune system next because it's kind of like your body's SWAT team and glycation is like a saboteur sneaking in to mess with the mission. Your immune system is like a well-trained army constantly patrolling to keep you safe from invaders like bacteria, viruses, and even rogue cells that may become cancerous. It has two main branches, the innate immune system, which is like the rapid response team. Imagine in that case, macrophages and neutrophils gobbling up pathogens like Pac-Man. And number two, the adaptive immune system. This is the elite squad that learns, remembers, and crafts specific weapons like antibodies to take down repeat offenders. Key players here in this second stage, the adaptive immune response, include white blood cells like T cells, which direct the battle, and B cells, which produce antibodies. Antibodies are the Y-shaped proteins that latch onto invaders and mark them for destruction. This system is a marvel. It's why a cold doesn't kill you and why vaccines work. But when glycation enters the picture, it's like someone's spiking the army's water supply. Things start to go wrong. They don't work as well. And the immune system's ability to protect you takes a major hit. So how does glycation mess with this finely tuned defensive system? Let's break that down. Ages are the sticky byproducts of glycation, and they don't just sit there non-responsively or without an effect. 
they bind onto a special receptor called the receptor for ages or rage receptors for advanced glycation in products and this interaction is like flipping a switch for inflammation studies like the one by yamagishi et al in 2022 showed that ages bind to rage and activate internally a pathway called nf kappa b and what this pathway does is it ramps up inflammatory signals like cytokines in specific immune cells. This chronic inflammation exhausts your immune system, makes them work overdrive and in an inflamed state, making them less effective at fighting infections or spotting cancer cells early. But it may even get worse. Glycation directly can damage immune cells. For example, macrophages. I've joked previously, those are like Pac-Man-like cells that gobble up pathogens. Those macrophages may lose their ability to engulf pathogens when they are excessively glycated. And that was shown in 2020. A study by Zhang and colleagues found that glycated proteins impair macrophage function. It slows their response to infections, making you sicker for longer periods of time. And then there's the issue with antibodies, which is a big deal. Let's dive into that next. Antibodies are often referred to as immunoglobulins. They are the immune system's precision-guided missiles. But here's an important point. They are proteins, and proteins are prime targets for glycation. When sugars attach onto antibodies, they do not work as well. They do not recognize pathogens as effectively as they should. There was a fascinating study by Wang and colleagues just a few years ago in 2023, and they showed that glycated immunoglobulin G, or IgG, has reduced binding affinity to its targets, and what that means is that it is less effective at tagging pathogens for destruction, allowing those pathogens to wander more free than they should. It's like sending your best sharpshooter out with a jammed rifle. It just doesn't work as well. This isn't just academic. Glycated antibodies contribute to a weaker immune response which means you are more susceptible to infections, symptoms can be worse, and you are sicker, again, for a longer period of time. What's worse is this damage can compound over time, especially in conditions like diabetes, where glycation is rampant. And speaking of compounding damage, let's talk about how this ties into aging because glycation and aging are like two peas in a pod. Aging is the ultimate long game, and glycation plays a starring role into why your immune system starts to falter as you get older. As we age, ages accumulate in our tissues, like rust building up in a car. In 2021, there was an article published by Yurabari and colleagues that showed age accumulation is a natural part of aging, but it can accelerate the aging process when blood sugar is high chronically. This buildup, specifically for today's topic, impairs immune cell function, particularly T lymphocytes or T cells and B lymphocytes or B cells. And that leads to what scientists call immunosenescence. That's the gradual decline of your immune effectiveness. And as we age, we likely experience that. That's why older adults are likely more prone to infections like pneumonia or struggle to respond to vaccines. Glycation stiffens proteins within immune cells, slowing their signaling capacity and making them less responsive. It's like trying to run a marathon with molasses in your veins, not very effective. And if you throw insulin resistance into the mix, things get even messier. So let's unpack that concept. 
you've listened to previous episodes most likely or checked out my colleague Dr. Ben Bickman's deep dives on insulin resistance. And if you have, you know that it is a big deal. Insulin resistance is when your cells stop responding to insulin, the important hormone that shuttles glucose into cells out of the bloodstream. As a result, blood sugar stays high when you are insulin resistant, and high blood sugar is glycation's best friend. There was a review published in 2023, and they linked insulin resistance to increase age formation, which then feeds back into even more inflammation and worse insulin resistance. It's a vicious cycle. Why is this a problem for immunity? Well, chronically high blood sugar doesn't just glycate antibodies, it also impairs the signaling that should result. Last year in 2024, there was an article published that found that insulin resistance promotes pro-inflammatory IgG glycoforms. And that's basically combinations of different types of um, uh, clustered antibodies. And this process cranks up inflammation and weakens immune defenses. This sets the stage for diseases like type 2 diabetes, where immune dysfunction makes complications like infections or slow wound healing much more common. So let's connect the dots to some real world consequences here. Glycation's role in immune dysfunction shows up in several diseases. Let's talk about type 2 diabetes. We've covered that before. This is a key example. The chronic inflammation from age rage signaling was shown a few years ago in 2022 in a study published by Wang and colleagues, and they showed that age rage signaling contributes to diabetic complications like neuropathy and poor wound healing, and they directly implicated impaired immune responses. Many will know that diabetics will repair wounds very slowly, if at all, and the immune system is right in the middle of that mix. Then there's the concept of rheumatoid arthritis, where glycated proteins in your joints trigger autoimmune reactions. That too was shown in a publication just last year in 2025, where altered IgG glycosylation, that's altered immunoglobulin or antibody glycation, resulted in impaired autoimmune problems. Even IgG4 related disease, that's a rare autoimmune condition, is tied to glycation. There was a bibliometric analysis by Zhang et al. in 2025, this year, and they noted <clears throat> that chronic inflammation from glycation may exacerbate or worsen fibroinflammatory disorders like arthritis and other autoimmune conditions. So let's not also forget about infections. Glycation weakens our immune system's ability to fight off bugs, making you more vulnerable to things like urinary tract infections, or pneumonia, especially if there is a diabetic background to the patient. All right, enough of the clear negatives as you compare glycation and your immune system. Let's talk about solutions similar to what we've done in the past. The good news is that you can reduce glycation and protect your immune system. First, as we've always advocated, control your blood sugar. A low-carb diet, as shown in a study published by Polson and colleagues just two years ago in 2023, they show that reduced dietary ages improves insulin sensitivity. So they advocated in that case for whole foods like meat and eggs and veggies over processed junk loaded with sugars. The second thing is to move. Move your body. Exercise. It's not just about looking good in the mirror or elsewhere. Regular physical activity improves your insulin sensitivity. Therefore, your cells are more responsive to insulin. Glycation will decrease and inflammation will be mitigated. 
Third, there is always a good opportunity to consider your oxidative stress levels. So let's consider antioxidants. Compounds like vitamin C or alpha lipoic acid can neutralize some of the oxidative stress that has been tied to ages over time. You can check out the work by Forbes et al., a publication in 2020, for more on this topic. Finally, let's avoid dietary ages. Although dietary ages make up a small percentage of the total glycation burden, meaning most of the glycation happens when sugar attaches to protein, external age formation that you ingest is also a part of that equation. Overly grilled meats, the really charred, blackened parts of meats are rich in ages, as are fried foods. They're delicious, but loaded with ages from high heat cooking programs. So be careful there. When you can, opt for steaming or poaching when possible. So there you have it. Glycation is like a silent saboteur, sticking sugars where they don't belong. And in this case, weakening your immune system's ability to keep you healthy. From gunking up antibodies specifically, to fueling inflammation and accelerating aging among the immune system. It is a process that we cannot ignore. By managing blood sugar, eating smart, staying active, and maybe even leaning into some of the antioxidants I've talked about, you can keep glycation in check and your immune system firing on all cylinders. And finally, stay curious. Keep learning about your metabolic health because the knowledge you can gain may lead you to more effective ways to take care of your life-saving immune system. Thanks one and all for joining me today. I will see you next time. Keep your blood sugar low and your immune system strong. And in the process, you'll stay sharp and stay healthy.